Matthew 27, 57 through 66 says, As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene went, and the other Mary was sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priest and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, the deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order at the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that He has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. Today is Holy Saturday. We lose the emotion of this day because we know the rest of the story. But put yourself in the place of those in the first Holy Week. Pilate thought that once Jesus was crucified, he would be done with this situation and could move past it. He had already washed his hands of it. But the Pharisees are now there asking for guard because they were afraid that Jesus had said He would rise again. Seems like they're the only ones who remember that at this point. The disciples have lost hope. They're scattered. Everything they have invested in and believed in for the last three years is gone. Now they're afraid for their very lives. Will Rome come after them as rebels, as traitors? There's anxiety, there's tension, there's hopelessness. There's this feeling of where do we go from here? It seems like they are surrounded by defeat. The promises and hope of Jesus seem so far away. Holy Saturday is an unusual day in Holy Week. It's a day about waiting. It is about living in this uncomfortable place between the defeat and the despair we see all around us and the promise of God that has not yet become a reality. Abraham and Sarah live in this place as God has promised them to be the father of a great nation and have many descendants, as many as the, the stars in the skies or the uh, a, a number of grains of sand. And yet they see their bodies aging and they're well past their childbearing years. And yet they cling to this promise, hoping and waiting, although all they see is despair. Joseph in the Old Testament had a dream that he would be in a position of authority that Others would bow down to him, but those that he dreamed would bow down to him actually sell him into slavery. And for over 17 years, he will be tossed around in basically the prison system of Egypt, holding on to this promise, this dream that God had given him. But all around him, all he sees is hopelessness, despair. David is anointed to be the king, and yet it will be almost 20 years before he will ever sit on the throne. In that time, King Saul will threaten his life. He'll throw spears at, at David and try to pin him to the wall. And David will actually end up living in the wilderness, hiding and running like a fugitive. At one point, he goes to live with the Philistines, the, the enemy of Israel. Jesus preached that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. It's His message over and over throughout the Gospels. But now He's been crucified and buried. We are surrounded by defeat and despair, waiting for the promise that has not yet come. A lot of our Christian walk is lived out in this awkward space. Romans mentions that our sufferings are not worth sharing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And Paul says all creation is waiting in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. We live in a world that's recovering from a pandemic with economic challenges all around us, with wars and rumors of war. And on top of this, 
there's personal chaos and, and, and personal anxiety that fills each of our lives just from day-to-day -day responsibilities and things that we face. And we live in this place hoping and, and waiting for the promise of God to be fully revealed. We live waiting for the promise that His resurrection gave of a redeemed creation, a new heaven and a new earth. On Holy Saturday, there is nothing to do but wait. God will do what God will do in God's time. There will be times it seems as if we have lost the battle. There will be times where defeat, it seems, has overtaken us. There will be those who plot and plan, but all of that will count for nothing when the victory that has been won on the cross and initiated through the resurrection of Jesus becomes a full reality. On this day, Holy Saturday, our part is to keep faith, to keep hope, to keep praying and battling and pointing the world to Jesus as we, as we trust in the promise of new life that will come in His time, in His way. We want the promises of God now, but Holy Saturday reminds us that we wait on God's timing. There will be times of silence, times that we don't understand. There will be times where it seems like the enemy has won. There will be times of despair. But on this day, we are reminded like the prophet Isaiah said, that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So this holy Saturday, we wait. It is a reminder that we wait and hope in the Lord that what is not yet will soon be. Go hoping, clinging, and waiting for the promise of God to be revealed. Have a blessed day.